What's the difference between dynamic effort lifting and the Olympic lifts? This is a question that kind of gets floated around by many people who just kind of ask it without honestly wanting an answer. They say it more as a statement than a question, but I'll answer it here. You aren't projecting the load in the dynamic effort lift. You'll hear the argument that the dynamic effort method, especially when done with bands or chains, trains you to accelerate through the entire lift. But oftentimes in sports, when you make contact with an opponent, whoever produces a greater instantaneous impulse likely gains an advantage. Impulse just refers to force over a specific interval of time. The impulse in the Olympic lifts is much shorter than in a dynamic effort squat or deadlift. Producing an instantaneous impulse is different from using the entire range of motion from flexed hips and knees to extended hips and knees to achieve the output. Needless to say, they both do occur in sports, but the latter of the two is less frequent. I've mentioned this very difference between loaded jumps and Olympic lifts before. Loaded jumps include one long acceleration phase, long in both distance and duration. Olympic lifts really include multiple impulse spikes. First pull, second pull, third pull. This is the same difference between Olympic lifts and the typical dynamic effort squat and deadlift. When it comes to projecting an external body of mass in sports, the Olympic lifts seem to offer a much better stimulus and motor strategy to train for this. Because the impulse in sports is much closer to the impulse in a clean or a snatch compared to a dynamic effort squat or deadlift. So that's my main answer between what the difference is between dynamic effort and Olympic lifts is. Just short, quick thoughts on the topic. See you next video.